within their domestic season. We'll have to wait and see whether they're able to do so as we kickstart things on map number two. It's Viperio's pick. It's Ancient. Oh, it's Vertigo, may I say, off the back of winning Ancients, and they're going to be starting on the T side. If Viperio kickstart things in the same way they finished Ancient, I think this one might be a 2-0. Have a look. Run up towards ramp. Viperio want to get aggressive. Of course, it's Vertigo. It feels like the staple map for this team at this point. But apparently, Chets have done their homework. Four kills on ramp. Viperio go for an A play. And it's fizzled out in its entirety. It's Artist against five. And it's flawless by Chets to start things off here in map two. Not too bad. Not too bad. Needed a bit of a, uh, a confidence booster, some would call it, just to uh, kickstart the momentum in towards their CT side. Their opponent's map pick. And that's not too shabby at all. They're not going to say no to a round like that for Chet. Brilliant from them. It means, of course, for Viperio, they can have nothing in terms of an investment in toward round number two. I mean, they, they kind of have to force in a way because they can't really afford to do not so. So they're going to bring out Tech 9 to, you know, whatever they can really to the table. For Chet, this should be a pretty comfortable second on the board. Spam away, Dutchy. Spidey senses tingle in the movement. On the gap push or on the yellow push? I don't know. That's probably like the, the one position on any active duty map that is like has the most names for it, right? You know, short, yeah. gap, uh, ivy. Um, I've heard people call it narrow before. Like, dude, just stop being people edgy. People call it alley as well. Alley, like, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, Can we just, you know, universally decide on, on one option? You know, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Dutchy. Finding one, Giraffe a double, Ents his M4 kicking in as well, Javi swinging out with the MP9, we'll find the last two, Artist and Pink both dropped, but a couple of kills that goes Viperio's way, most importantly a bomb plant, and that's going to add to the cash here of the T side, as they get themselves onto an eco, should be too much of an issue here. O2, do you believe maybe a, a bit of a tech timeout coming up here? I'm assuming so, as we see uh, this graphic come up here. I'm assuming we maybe have a little bit of a tech pause coming through, but a decent start for Chet. It's not looking too shabby yeah. at all for them as we come straight back into things. And of course, that was a full investment of five pairs. Didn't work in the way they would have wanted, but to get a bomb plant, you know, it's a silver lining. What is a little bit of a rough situation of them going over to start things off? It's better than nothing. Now they're just going to go for a little bit more of a lesser buy. A couple of pistols coming through, but sticking around that 2K mark just to make sure that they have uh, money to work with in towards the next round. Beagle spamming away for artists. Okay, and they're just testing the waters out on ramp, just trying to find any damage they can. TVS applying some towards middle as well. Nothing too much to write home about just yet. Overall, Chets, you know, you've got the numbers game in your favour, the rifle game, the actual scoreline sake as well, you are leading. Nice shot with the Deagle, Artist actually goes forward to pick up the gun. That could be a bomb plant as well here for the T side. So already making moves here in a round that they really had no business in. Yeah, potentially. Oh, no. We were kind of saying that there was, you know, a bit of a throwaway round, but this could be made even more dicey. Now back to three versus three. Swaggy and Dutchie will combine. What a piece. Deagle doesn't quite hit his target, but it's information gained. Swaggy's still swinging out. These Deagles trying to test the waters. MMS trying to keep this M4 on its toes. Swinging back and forth. Good flash. Swaggy, although blind, does get the kill. Now down to two. Be stuck by Swaggy and he does not indeed fall. I was going to say get traded, but Summer holds his nerve for both kills. Diffuse being stuck by Swaggy a full 10 seconds. He was the only man without a kit, but they just wanted the M Force to take the contact. Whoever stuck it didn't matter. They had the time for either or, and they facilitate a third round. Viperio, another bomb plant though, does give chances with another buy. Exactly. I mean, that's the main thing. And of course, because that was a lesser investment, it means that they've got plenty of money to work with heading in towards the next. All that's coming towards pl the, the play, sports for the rifles. So there's definitely silver lining and just sort of, you know, niceties to be taken away there from Viperian. What is, you know, a situation of them starting 0-3 down, but, you know, they're at least making it competitive with very little in terms of firepower. Now they've got a full buy to work with, we'll just change things. And already the answer is yes, as it gets picked off by artists. Me. Why Dutchy with this molly forcing him out into the open, but a re-smoke on the angle does give him a bit of space. Gives me 
trying to isolate that fight, but realizes enough is enough. Artis doesn't as he walks into the orb. 4v4 now. Nades try and flush him out of the angle. A molly that lands on top of him certainly will not allow the orb to escape. And they do pick up the pace towards A. But it's an A1S from Dutchie that finds the first. Waggy a second. And it's all on ping. 1v2. It's tough. Going for the elevated angle. Finds the first one. Able to find the second as well. Cannot transfer. And it's traded out 4-0. And that flawless star continues for Chet. And this has been much better on towards that CT side. I'm assuming with this attack force coming through, it's Viperio who know that they're in a little bit of trouble now. That things are starting to kind of run away from them. Chets, they've looked brilliant. Their CT has been, you know, so solid so far. The A site has been pretty much locked in. I mean, they're finding retakes with relative ease and denying that bomb going down more often than not. And while there was a slight gap open towards B... Again, that retake, so strong for Chets. There's very little that they have to be concerned about right now. But for Viper, I think they sort of understand that this is not exactly the dominant Viper that we know over towards Vertigo that we're sort of used to. Then again, is it a fair test that we only look at the first four rounds of the game? You know, maybe maybe Viperio have had a slow start. I mean, we saw it out in Ancient, you know, Chets, slow start, but they put the burners on in the start of the CT side. Momentum was something that they played into their favour. So maybe once Vipero are able to, to crack the outer shell, they get to the gooey bit in the middle that sort of gives them said momentum and said chances on the T side. Let's see for now, though. It's 4-0. It's rifles predominantly against pistols. Vipero take towards B. And uh, a fair chunk of util behind them as well. Could mean an execute and Javi kind of... Stranded in no man's land. Smokes, mollies, everything. Nothing to force the MP9 out of position. The bomb is coughed up first. Swaggy's given space. A Tech 9 that pushes in. A1S will fire through. And just like that, 5v3. This round doesn't look any healthy for any healthier, excuse me, for Viperio. Yeah. Out of brackets. One to two going the way of Swaggy. Xavi will see it off quite comfortably. Only losing one casualty is well. Very good. Over towards uh, that Chet side. 5-0 start. I mean, this has been... It's been pretty plain sailing. I, I haven't really seen kind of Viperia look as comfortable as they usually do on this map. I think there potentially might even need to be, for them, a change up in tempo. Or even the, the case of calling another pause. If this force buy doesn't go in their favor, or this full buy, may I say, that doesn't go their way, to maybe be like, okay, you know, what's going wrong? Where are we seeing openings for us to try and expose? Because so far, they're not finding too many. Molly forcing Gizmi forward, not backward. Maybe he takes the fight, and he does so. Wins it against Entz. Some proactiveness towards Ramp. Grants a man advantage, an unfamiliar one for Vipero. It feels like they're always a man down in these rounds. So nice that they're able to set the tone in the correct way here on the T side of Vertigo. Already swagging up one more. Bing will fall. Bring the numbers back. What was a great start for Vipero? Now a little bit limited. The space that they've got to work with isn't exactly uh, too good. I mean, they've got all that lower control. They've got the ability to go back towards A. They want to head at ramp, potentially head towards stairs too, if that's their idea. Well, they haven't really got a clean pathway in towards the site, and they'll know that. Swaggy has to be a priority to drop since he is the low HP player. Gives me fires off, finding Swaggy four versus three. TVS trying to collect on a flank instead. It's Artist or what to remove. Didn't see Giraffe on the boost though, and so his position eventually compromised. And Viperio have themselves a site and a bomb plant, a man advantage to go with it as well. Feels like this round's going to be the most likely out of all of them that have been played so far. Might just see a Chet save in all honesty. Their money doesn't look too good despite winning five in a row. A chunk of an aid will come through. One towards Giraffe down to 46 points of HP. And if one tries to cross, that could be potentially damning for them. But for the time being, it's okay. Shoulder spot to Dutchy. Trying to force his way in here, but he dropped at the hands of MMS. And I think now that's going to be a save call for TVS. Keep that AWP in play. It's not worth trying to make a 1 versus 3 work. And that bomb already three quarters of the way ticked. Finally, a first run of the ball for Viperia. They were in desperate need. First on the board, mate. Important one as well. Yeah. 
Get the ball rolling. Money's not looking too bad either. They can afford drops, whereas Chets can't really. It's scary to look at how much money Viperio have after losing five and winning one compared to how little money Chets have after winning five and only just losing their first. Either way, it's the game we know and love, and it's a game that Chets are going to have to deal with in a situation that they actually... Managed to bolster out four M4s and an AWP with stacks of util as well. Fair play to them. Oh, that's it. Now, of course, uh, you look towards the uh, the Viperia side in terms of can they use that round? Unfortunately, not looking too good. As they're down to two players in a matter of mere moments. Giraffe sure gives me all that's left. And heard a tank through the smoke as well. How does it look so damning for Viperio? Concerned, mate. Concerned is the... Uh, Word of the hour. Two versus four. Molly towards gap. I don't think there's any real chance here. Gizmi's going to wait for this smoke to fade. You don't expect someone to be playing here, though. Could be Spaggy to have him done in. And you're off. 1v4. Orp in his hands. It's the unorthodox weapon. But what is the rifler? Uh, he'll be told to keep the rifles in his hands and not the orb. Viperio concede a sixth. I'm worried. I really am. i got to say, I think, uh, you know, already this is starting to get to a quite a concerning factor where they're just pulling further and further away. And Viperio, they're kind of stuck in this brutal cycle that, that we talk about where, you know, small buy in, they can't find any success, can't find a bomb plant, and it means that they're back to square one of, you know... Either a low buy, a no buy, or a rough one. And we see a rough one here. It's a double AK setup with a few pistols to support. It's not pretty at all, but it's basically all they can muster up. So give it a go towards middle here instead. Swaggy on the angle. Forced up and didn't get anything. It's Giraffe that scoops the AK. Might just be chucked across to a teammate here. At least make the most sense considering, you know, artists and MMS both with more HP in the same Kevlar. But it's Gizmi and Ping to pick up frags. 3v2. But every single player on this Viperio side is very low. And the AWP will find its first of three. Flash will come through as well. That'll just limit the time that savvy has got to work with. Oh, Viperio, but at the very least, bomb plant, post plant set up as well. And just trying to, as best they can, tick down that clock. Bomb is in their favour. A smoke will come through. They know that TBS on the right-hand side, but they have to be careful. It's RV. And they are, but it doesn't matter. Low HP gives me a fall. Confused. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe Pink has the opportunity to transfer. But no, of course not. Not going to happen. TBS and Javi survive for Viperio, considering there's a half buy. It's a pretty decent one. But look at the scoreline, mate. It's 7-1 to Chet's CT side vertigo is looking very, very strong right now. It is. I mean, this is one of those maps as well, which a lot of teams, or some teams, and Viper being one of them, do like the T side. It's been where we see some of their best work. And the fact that we're not seeing it now, we're seeing the side start to dwindle at the, uh, the strength of Chet's vertigo is already starting to get a... You know, in my books, in a really, really worrying state where I do start to maybe think that this could even be pushing our way towards an overpass decider just because of uh, how damning it's already looking over towards Viper. They don't really seem to be awake at the wheel right now. We're going to see a Chet's time out call, attack pause for them as they just want to continue to implement the success that they found early doors. They've got a six round lead to work with and they they continue to extend it, especially if they can guarantee themselves a lead at the half already. I mean, an 8-1 scoreline, it's very difficult to turn that on its head and start to kind of, you know, bring things back in your favour. It's such a mountain to climb. All right. see it. Any changes for Viperio? Not in the first engagement. It's MMS that falls. Eighth death. Only one kill to his name. Not the rest of his team's doing any better. But just to isolate that, uh, that first engagement, right? It's a very underwhelming Viperio and a very on-the-ball Chets. I don't know.
know, mate. I don't know what's happened. Giraffe at least is going to work for the numbers game to fall back level. But that doesn't exactly give Viperio an advantage at the minute, th uh, minute 10 mark. No, not at all. Not at all. In a four versus four. Oh, the big wipe here, yo. They need to be careful. TVS or fall. That is at least better, but a trade will come through quickly. I mean, they know that it was a double smoke, so a second man's out on middle for Xavi. He had to care for the jump up hold. That in turn means he's given up sight. Nade tagging up. Gizmi pushes forward to find him with the bomb in his back pocket as well. It was a risky move. It was one that Viperio take in their favour and in their stride. 3v2. The exact same situation as where they won their first round. And in that very moment, of course, they were able to hold things down. I think they'll be able to do that again. And calling for a flashbang through the smoke. Does find himself one. But Gizmi does respond. So we're second on the ball for Viperio. Starting to, to wind things up here. And uh, close that gap a little more so. Viperio need to start getting knee deep in it, though, if they want to find themselves... At least a, a respectable half here. Because right now, it feels like they're, they're putting their toes in the water and just being like, that's about it for us. You know, we're, we're not finding consistent results. We're not finding convincing ones either. And that's a worry, especially in a game of Counter-Strike. Yeah, I, I mean, I, with things and how they are right now for Vipero, yes. Okay, getting a second round on the board is great. It's, we're starting to see, kind of, you know, potentially what they can bring to the table. There's very little to be convinced about right now, though. And with the Chets, I don't think they need to be too overly cautious or concerned about, you know, the fact that they have, uh, you know, dropped around and maybe, you know, that, that deficit being chipped away a little bit on the on the lesser side. But Peru, another pause call by for them, man. I, that's in itself shows and is an implementation about how concerned they actually are, right? They are really trying to change the tempo, change the storyline in towards this uh, half so far. And... Those pauses just to try and, you know, smooth things out and calm things down a little bit is uh, kind of seems like they're clutching at straws. But uh, maybe it might work in their favor. For, for Chets, of course, in towards the next round. And it's fortunately, if you have Viperio, it's a bit of leeway because it's a lesser buy. Double five seven WSPS and M4A1S. It should be a third, you say. Every comment comes with an asterisk next to it, though. Feels like for this yeah. one, though. No. Should be. Will it be? Kismi's going to get the boost over the top. Takes a couple of ticks to the volley. Back site going to be covered off by the incendiary. And Viperio starts to treacle in towards this B site. TVS is going to be baited into a rotate. No one's going to late lurk from ramp. But a quad stack on B. Feels like they've taken way too long in this push. All the smoke in front. Yeah, as you mentioned, it's, you know... Four out of five here. One in quick rotation as well, if they want it. MMS just holding for a flank. But aside from that, for Chets, they've got the numbers play here over towards this B side. This could get messy momentarily. Xavi starting to back up though with a 5-7. Oh, they're rotating towards A. They thought they've made noise and they're going to double back. Overthought it entirely. Viperio walks into a barren B bomb site. Bomb will go down. Chets. I mean, I like the idea. I do like the idea. You know, sometimes you've got to go for these things, but it is just not meant to be. And with that, it's going to be a third round. So, no asterisks here. What a cheeky boost by Artis. Gets one. Dutchie gone. Down to four, and they certainly won't be trying for a retake here. Maybe just for damage. Potentially, right? Potentially, that could be exactly that. What? If they can find an exit or two, it'll be nice. It'll be... I guess a little bit something for them to work with. For Viper, I think they're all too aware that their exit routes are very limited right now. Swaggy trying to cause a problem from behind. Thankfully for him, he'll be drop 5-7. Who was looking for more? Not exactly the exit they were looking for. Only one survive for Jets, but... Uh, for Chets, may I say. But, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, the investment was pretty low. The gamble stack was so unfortunate. It was a bit of a 50-50... And if they, you know, stood their ground, stayed where they were, that works brilliantly for them. But they had the numbers advantage on the execute on towards the site. And unfortunately, I think they just get hesitant off the back of the lack of sound cue, the lack of information. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll just go and show face over towards A. Potentially, they could have snuck their way out there already. The wrong call, and it was costly. Viperia closing in on that gap. TVS 
Posted up the orb. Oh, baits the shot. Ping. Doesn't even swing wide off the back of it. Usually people bait in the orb and maybe swing out wide. Instead, he backs away. And again, so does the CT side. Javi wants nothing to do with it. Might have just heard the run boost. Now... with it. Xavi up close yet again. Unchecked. This angle goes. Jumps over the top. Not going to happen. Only the one. Mercurio, a minute on the clock. Don't have to accelerate here. They realise as well. They can play for time. Yeah, ill advice on the jump up. I like this and Swaggy. He could take that position where Xavi once was and hopefully for him it kind of goes overlooked, right? They don't expect someone to have replaced him so quickly. But it's also forced Viperio. Well, not forced them. It's kind of prompted them to make a decision to go back over towards ramp now dutchy posted up in a bit of a one way here tough one two clear flash will come through won't quite catch him he's got a great opportunity to get a freebie and he will and he makes it too looking for three but he can't quite confirm it and it's got the lineup ready for the bomb plant made it himself but lobs one right back in mms will be removed now it's artist in the clutch there's your first didn't spot the second up in headshot. TVS is going to back off the angle, but with eight seconds on the clock, Save. as you said, fella, no point going for this one. Viperio will concede an eighth. All turn a bit pear-shaped at the start of the second map here. Viperio just aren't looking the same as we saw them in the exit of map one of Ancient. Yeah, they're not looking too pretty to me right now. I think for Viperio, this is, uh, you know, there was moments of brilliance. But that's the only thing. It's been, you know, flash in the pan kind of scenarios and situations for this T side. They have been considerably falling behind on a map in which they've been notoriously, historically, very, very good on. This is not what we would have expected coming in towards this sort of game. I, I think, you know, we kind of already said that potentially, you know, both teams should, should take their map pick. And if they don't, it might change the story. But once Ancient went the way of Vipero in the fashion that it did, for me, it only seemed like this was one-way traffic. And the fact that it's now, sort of, you know, flipped hands, I think Viperio, there's a world in which their kind of mentality and morale starts to crumble a bit. Certainly feels the case. I don't think they'll give up just yet. 100%. I do, uh, I do see your POV. Flash TVS. Just in and out of that angle. That flash doesn't do much, but a missed shot cost the orc the initial angle. Might go swinging as well. Gizme, he's able to pick up the first and the second Gizme. Three versus five. That's better for Viperio as they take sight control. Hence goes for a worldy. Pulls up with nothing. 2v5. Expecting a save. I think so. Swaggy trying to take a couple of options with a smoke. Same for Zappi and getting pretty close. Getting very close there. But in the end, it is just going to be that save call for the two remaining rifles of Chet to keep hold of what they've got. Viperio going to get themselves up to four rounds, which means on the kind of the, the last few of this first half, they can at least. Have a bit of a saving grace. Now, MS, he went for a bit of an aggressive hunt here. He does get caught in transition by Swaggy, which means that they're at least making it costly on the other side, too. They put a bomb plant and a round in their favor of Viperio. They're buying power in towards the next. Shouldn't be, well, too problematic by any means. And they'll keep hold of what they got. An AK and m 41 s for Jets. With a buy around it, it'd be pretty brutal. I'm probably expecting it just to be a save for the other three, right? Maybe Dutchy might want to upgrade his pistol, potentially same for Ents, but stick around that 2k mark and keep on what they've got. But no, it's looking like they're going to fully into this. This is high risk, high reward. I mean, yes, they've guaranteed a lead at the half already. Failed to yeah. convert this round. I think Viper have got a very good opportunity and path to making it, you know, seven on the board on the T side. You are right. This has given Viperio. Not large, a lot of hope because financially Chet's aren't stable. There is a chance to wipe away at it, especially when this buy consists of two MP9s and a scout. You know, it's not exactly premium rifles that we see in Viperio's pockets. Hence, we'll find one with the nade. Dutchie's tag does eventually mean something. But a four versus four. Hence, picking up on some information from Short as well. So, an A player coming in here for Viperio. Three players to try and defend it on this Chet side. Stuff. Oh. Going for the elevator angle, TVS, you still waiting to pop a flash. The bomb should be able to go down here. To pop the post -bomb. Find all, oh, and then still he had a bit of timing to work with. 4v3. MMS is in 
The sight spot. Terrible. These flashes are continuing to sort of he drip fed out on towards this. And sight gives me. Oh, he's let one run by, but he does get the trade. TVS's scout responds. Giraffe, they know his position. Shabby. Go swing in. It's a messy first kill. 4 HP. TVS is going to upgrade to a rifle. Knows that he's not on it now, but he has to take a swing to double check. TVS has got a kit. There's plenty of time, and they have themselves a ninth on the board. And then around as well, you know, high risk, high reward, we were saying, with forcing off the back of just two save rifles and no money to work with. I mean, if that had crumbled, that really opened up a way for uh, a Viper to make a seven at the half and make it, you know, as even as it possibly could be off the back of a grim start for them. And the fact that Chets have converted that sort of round. That's another kick in the teeth towards Viper. Well, they know that was a prime opportunity for them to see themselves up to a fifth on the board and chip away at that deficit further and further. And they've gumbled it once again. The best they can get now at the half is six as we head into the penultimate round. Time. Uses a luxury right now for Viperio. They are merely taking baby steps towards middle. Swaggy is going to offer that. He wants to play from a more passive angle from CT. Holding this jump up position. Javi. Moving back to support. Molly lobbed across to ping. And all in all, right now, very slow beginnings once again for Viperio. But... Might just see some disruption out in middle here. 50 seconds left. Got to get a move on if you're Viperio. Yeah, I mean, there's 45 seconds on the clock to work with. No real engagement being taken. I mean, Giraffe down 79, but it's not exactly problematic. It seems like the Viperio, the, the biggest thing is they just lack that decision making about where to sort of force his agenda and that's what we're seeing right now they kind of look in a little bit of no man's land it's an a split or b split to come through here if they go towards b it'll be so risky and they are and they're walking straight into the meat grinder there's two three as it just falls apart further and further and the mp9 wants some of the action as well he will fall but for mms so much more to be done and swaggy will limit what he can find a labored spray sums up viperio's half here as we head into the final round of it 10 rounds collected for chets the fact that we were talking about 8 7s as well and how good the opportunity looked for Viperio at one point. Now, how bleak and dire it's looking. Not ideal. Could it be another 10 5 scoreline? I mean, isn't as good on a map like Vertigo compared to what it's like on Ancient. Certainly a round and a half that's looking pretty good for Chats though when Viperio. Tech 9s, Mac 10s, Galils, only the one AK on MMS. What have they got in store for us? I really feel worried about this Viperio side. I mean, they are in a, an uncomfortable state. Gives me. I mean, just sneak his way up top. But Dutchie, in and around the smoke, he's making a double. Gives me. Able to trade alongside Giraffe, and now they've got numbers in their favor. Yeah, not bad. I like this. MMS with another. One man for the job here. Mr. Xavi, 1v3. Flash going to be drawn out to try and take your first fight. Tags up Giraffe as well. Both players low. Now, this is a lot more manageable and bite size here for the rifler. Going to hear the bomb planted, thinking it's a tap, but it is indeed a stick. Giraffe's going to try and wander away. Xavi. Finds his second. Gives me. He's got to hold on here. Good part of 30 seconds left of this round. There is a kit in place. So for Xavi, as he taps it, Gizmi, he's got a swing. Got to take the fight, but he knows that Xavi's not on it. Wants to play around the sandbag, and Gizmi does brilliantly in the 1v1. The uh, fine margins and, and narrow rounds once more, but Viperio take themselves to a fifth. We're going to go to a break, ladies and gentlemen. When we are back, Chet's a response on the T side. Could be enough to take us to a third. Will it be done? We'll find out after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. An exhilarating first half of Vertigo leaves Chets in pole position to take us to a third and final map here in day nine of the ESL Premiership. I'm Retro Drew taking you through the BO3s, your quarterfinal matchups here as Viperio and Chets. Well, so far, so good for Viperio. They're a map up to none, but for Chets Esports, there's chance at a response here, and there is a chance at a third map. Back-to-back 10-5 -back halves as well. We saw an Ancient. We saw the same now on Vertigo, but in different sides. It was Viperio dominant on towards Chet's map pick. And vice versa, as we said here. Nate will come through and TVS will be chunked down to 48. A Swaggy just leading the charge. Definitely wants to get his hands dirty here. And a forward play towards A. Jumps on top of the boxes. This is a play I wouldn't recommend making, but it's one that Swaggy's able to pinch away a first kill and escape the jaws of Giraffe. 4v5. Viperio got to go on a bit of a retake here. No kits as of right now. Good spot for Artis, but a great dink. One point of health, the difference, MMS. We have to pick up another. That's Ents gone from Sandbag. Swaggy in the meantime going to find another. And it's all kicking off in favour of Chets. Dutchie and Swaggy with more and more and more. Chets number 11. Viperio starting to be shut up quite quick here on Vertigo. Yeah, Swaggy's the one. I mean... Another round in which he's really stepped up and, you know, kind of individually 
pave the path for uh, Chess to follow. He opens things up, finds the first, has two more kills to his tally as well. And he finds two with low HP, which is, you know, pretty formidable in his own regard. I gotta give him a lot of that credit. Now, as you know, we head in towards my number 17 for Viperia. They don't have anything to bring to the table in terms of buy where the same can't be said for Jets. This should be very comfortably a 12th on the board and Chets with a seven run lead. It's looking so good. It's not just a seven round lead. It's the fact that Viperio are on pistols here. And so the next round is M4s, but maybe half armor and low util. And I don't know, mate. It's uh, it's not looking it's not looking good. Chets certainly in a bliss position right now. Flash towards back site. That might just signify the start of the B play. Although Viperio, decent read. They uh, they push down A. They've got a flank out towards B. Although compromised by a Mac 10. Oh, are they going to go for a run boost? Watch Artist, watch Artist. Look at him go. Look, he's going to zip behind him. Dutchie, not even going to hear it because of the own shots. Oh, wait, he fell off the map. He fell. Oh, yeah. mate, that was going to be a slam dunk, like a sick, sick round. Just for, for the highlight reel's sake. He's just slipped right off the side of the map. Unlucky son. Giraffe now going to try and force a kill. But it's TVS to press the issues. And a responseless Viperio gives Chet's number 12. Chet's going to attack pause off the back of it as well, just to make sure that coming in towards the next round of 18, they have, you know, just that security that, you know, this is a bonus round for Chet's. But if they're able to convert it, it's more or less confirmation. The nails in the coffin that this map is going to go in their favor. And then, of course, we head to, to Overpass, our decider. So, I think the Chets, they've really set themselves up in, in a very good light at the moment because things are looking positive for them. They've got a massive gap to work with and they've got very little pressure on their shoulders. I mean, as we stand, I, I think there's very little you can say on a negative note over towards uh, this Chet side. It's been, it's been impressive and everything seems to be going towards this master plan. They've obviously done a lot of work in towards Vertigo. They've obviously done some hard prep and it's paying off in dividends right now. Twelve five. Four rounds away, Chets from forcing us to a third map. And certainly, you look at maybe the last time that these two teams played each other. Not the same as this one. I'll tell you that now. I'll give you the uh, the exact rundown in just a moment because I fear that something's going to be kicking off quite quickly today. It's MMS to find the first kill. So once again. Hyperia, although a, ma a man advantage at some point, it's responded by TVS. Gives me, we'll find Swaggy, so not the end of the world here for the CT side of Viperio. I was going to mention, 13 rounds across two maps that Royals were able to secure. 11 in the first, currently 12 in the second. Definitely feeling a lot more competitive than three weeks ago when they played in the Kaiser League. Starting to amp up to be quite the fun game, and three map affair feels certainly on the cards now I and mean, it already feels like a sort of formality right now doesn't it i mean this has just been well one-sided is probably the better way to put it this round a little bit more on the even front but of course this is just a bonus tbs will take a pop shot not gonna find his targets he himself taking damage same could be said for zavi and zavi will take even more off the back of that molotov flash is coming through and MS inviting pressure in towards Short. He wants to take this fight on towards Entz, who's the, the highest HP player. But not for much longer, so he will fall. TVS left alone. And MMS will see him off. It's going to be Viperi up to their sick. At the very least, it's better. But still, a lot of work to be done. Yes, absolutely good, sir. Viperio, it's small steps, but it's important ones. 12 to 6, so... Only half the rounds that what Chets have right now, but notice the money maybe on that T side. Even though they lose the first round and kind of play for a bonus, it's a couple of Galils and AKs that aren't supported by the most utility that you can get. So, yeah, I don't know, mate. I don't know. Certainly chances for Viperio, but it's quite the unorthodox scenario for them to be in, especially on a map that we both felt was a decent one for Viperio. It feels like the renowned map for them. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's a map in which... Is kind of a formidable part of their arsenal. It doesn't look that formidable right now. 
I mean, Grant, yes, they've got a nice little addition with a sixth round, but a lot more to be done as TVS will tap down in a master 15. It's done. Does get the kill. Lots of damage, artist. Finding Dutchy, TVS. HP. A missed smoke by Artist though, but it's one that actually kind of gives him a bit of space to work with on back. Ramp nearly finds another. Swaggy, 45 points of health, gonna tick down to 29 and a Molotov. It's Gizby that played from the sandbag position and it's ends to trade 2v2. Better. Better from Vipero making this competitive and ping. Who oh, just sneak his way in towards short. Hold on the angle and he potentially could be the difference. Makers ping will find one that leaves it all down to ends in a one versus two. He needs to actually the fight in there as a first, but he takes the tag on the way out. Down to 20 points. Giraffe makes it work, makes it stick in that 1v1 scenario. Has a kit, plenty of time anyway on the bomb, even if he didn't. Done and dusted. A seventh on the board for Viperio, but it's another narrow miss, mate. It's one of those scenarios where even though it's a win, you look financially at Viperio and it feels like a massive loss. Yeah, uh, that's exactly it, right? I think it's a case in which, you know, yes, it's, it's great for Viperio that they've walked away with kind of round in their favor, but the fact that even when they lose. Chets make every round expensive. That's always going to be a problem, especially for the CT side of Viper, where they can never have kind of longevity in terms of their economic situation. And of course, we're kind of seeing a little bit of in towards this round with the FAMAS coming through in the hands of MS. It's not exactly a quote unquote full buy here. Damage done to ends to begin with. from ping giraffe able to make things stick with the ak a double kill certainly does feel like it seals the fate of this round a couple of missed shots from swaggy and considering Entz was the man that started this round low hp i was gonna say it should be an easy follow-up for giraffe so an eighth on the board for viperio considering you know it was seven rounds in the gutter and things didn't look good 10-5 half lose the pistol really was not a good shape for viperio this one looking a lot better than what it did you know five minutes ago Oh, exactly that. I mean, it's already looking significantly better as we stand. I mean, a four-round deficit is a doable affair. I mean, I still think there's a lot of work to be done, but this is an important round. If they find this one, Chet's economy is broken. It means that they guarantee, you know, the ninth of the finding it, but of course, potentially a tenth off the back of it. This is super important. We need to see some of those big guns that have been a little bit quiet stepping up, like your artists and like your pings who have been a little bit on the shy side in towards Vertigo so far. Now can they come alive a little bit to find one of the more important rounds? And Viperio at least trying to get cheeky on the ramp play. I'm surprised that Dutchie hasn't been able to see MMS through this smoke as it starts to fade MMS. I thought he was going to be second best with the FAMAS, but takes the engagement, wins it out anyway. Might have just spotted a Falling AK on ramp as well. I do believe it was Xavi that fell off the angle. Not too sure. Oh, MMS caught with your knife out in a position that certainly will get you killed. Right side smoke. Molotov towards headshot. Flash towards backside as well. It's all the utility that barrels them in towards A. And they will get a, or an attempt to get a plant out of this. A molly and a nade indeed will take Swaggy out. So a 4v3. Not good. Not good for Chats. They're in a position now where it's uncomfortable. Bomb still yet to go down. Four versus three. Make that two. Looking for more as well. Giraffe stepping up to the plate Brilliant. with a huge fashion. Will the bomb go down? It will, but doesn't really matter off the back of it. Viperio find a round, and yes, a bomb plant's great for Chets, but it might even still mean that their money is a little bit uncomfortable in towards the next. With a Viperio, they're chipping this deficit away and making this very, very competitive now, finally. Unbelievable. Very, very well played yet again from Viperio and 
keeping numbers is the most important bit now for the CT side, right? Because we course, saw in the yeah, first yeah. half, it was 5-0 up for Chets, right? Remember that, 5-0 up for Chets, they lose the first round, and they're put on Mac 10s and Tech 9s. Maybe there was a Galil in the mix every now and again, you know? It really was a healthy investment, so we know for the CT side, it's about money making, and Giraffe certainly cashing in dollar in this round as its heads are rolling out towards ramp. Three kills in his name already. And this round with the bomb coughed up already on the B site doesn't exactly look like a round that Chets are going to get to their name. It's 12-10 after this final kill onto TVS. So I think double digits has even come about from a Viperio 12-5 deficit. You'd be out of your mind to say that they had a chance to get back into this game at that scoreline. But now, this looks manageable. It does. Only two rounds in it. I mean, of course, in these sort of rounds, the priority, a bomb plant, a couple of kills is nice. Unlikely, but it's nice to find it. And the Chets, they have got not even a sniff in towards this one. It's looking like it's going to be flawless. Only one left to find. And MMS just holds on the four to TVS. Ever attempts fate with a rotation out. He'll be dropped. And I think for TVS, just keeping hold of that tech and armor, it's not that bad. I mean, it's better than nothing. As long as he just parks up and doesn't overextend. We're going to see Viperio. Well, we will see regardless. Viperio up to their 10th. Bomb is dropped anyway. There's no chance of TVS getting it back in his control and getting a bomb down with just 30 seconds from the clock and five bodies to find. And he will get himself one and a dink on towards another, which is nice, but still doesn't make a difference. So Viperio up to 10. And we're finally seeing the, kind of the sleeping beasts come alive on towards their CT side of Vertigo. Two rounds in it now. And Chets, they've got to be feeling that pressure. And it might even be, you know, cause for them to call attack boards at some point. I would have said this round would have been the perfect opportunity to do so, right? Agreed. This would have been the one that you take a moment to think about what you want to do before you actually engage and act upon it. Ramp control has been very dire for Chets. B control is something they haven't really taken much note in. Mid presence? I mean, it's been, it's been blotchy. Maybe there's chance. Artist going to make noise towards CT. And a great shot from Swaggy. Elevated angle. Elevated chance. Five versus four. The nade damage was good from previous, but now Viperio worked with the man down. First time in a while that we've seen Viperio actually kind of, you know, tested on towards their CT side and be struggling a little bit. The question is, how do they respond? They have done some damage. And Gerard off the back of it, drops a bit of utility and goes aggressive. I quite like this call. If he can find himself one, potentially two, it'll change things massively. And as one peeks in, Dutchy will fall. That's an important kill. He's going to fall away. And I need to follow suit as well. Even more chip damage. So, giving it a go. Out towards B. Giraffe is yet to get even flushed out of the angle by a nade, by a molly, by something. Swaggy does get his response in middle. 18 points of health is all he's left with. As the spam continues, Giraffe dances around quad. He will eventually fall to the orb through the wall. But MMS has bought enough time to get rotating in. And the orb of TVS in a 1v2. Actually, sorry, 2v2. Ooh. But he's got them both anyway. Viperio concede 13. Chet's back in front. Money for the CT side is healthy though. So a multi-step approach. First one, the biggest hurdle, completed by Chet's. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say, though, that's a round in potentially which they shouldn't have won. I think, realistically speaking, I think Viperio, that's a round in which they lost. You know, that, that looked comfortable. They got the man, man advantage. They got space and, you know, created a, a world in which they, they had some room to work with over towards the site. But, you know, allowing the orb to step up with a double there and not kind of playing off the back of contact, really costly for Viperio. As the lead extended to three ones further, look and see if they make it worse. Pixel spotted a Dutchy. Fortunate, he'll just tuck himself in towards that corner. We see MMS gonna go out, I go off the back of it. I like this call here, this could work wonders. But he needs the support. Oh, shot from Dutchy. The silence is any thought of that hope and that hold. That was an intuitive play. I don't think it was a misplay by MMS, but it was just such a sick reaction from Dutchy. Enters found gives me through the smoke. 5v3, drop heard, draft's head spotted behind the generator. Now he's going to swing in front of it, but that gives Xavi even greater chance with the Galil to find it. And Viperio down to two. Pingo swinging out on ramp. There's a double stack in on yellow that he's got to dismiss. There's your first, but reloading. Caught out by Dutchy. 1v4 for Artist. How are Viperio from 
being in such a position of strength, managed to sort of fall so flat. Their play style is significantly struggling. We're seeing individuals, you know, have no ability to be traded. And as we saw there, MMS, go and aggro. I like the play though. I actually think the play in itself is good, but the support around it's not great. Doesn't have the utils to support, not, doesn't have anybody to play off the back of the trade <laughs> either. So it just makes it all the more uncomfortable. Chets up to 14. Two rounds away from taking Viperio's map pick and pushing us on towards our decider of overpass. This one had the potential to be a 2-0 when Chets lost their map pick, but they have recouped their losses and come off flying in towards Viperio's pick. Bomb will detonate. Artist can't change the outcome of the round. Chets will send a couple of players hunting. But certainly... Not going to find the AWP in time. He's just going to tuck into the corner and make sure no one goes peeking. 14 to 10. Two more to the finish line here for Chets. Well, I feel like they're on the kind of the path here just to see this off. It, it does seem like it, it should happen at this rate. Viperio, they've, as I mentioned, fell a little bit flat. And coming into his round number 25, it's a super risky buy. They've gone for a, a full investment here where... Of course, that all still in play, but double M4 one s MP9 on a FAMAS. It's a full investment, but not the best, best, of, may I say, amount of uh, firepower. Or oh, to take a pop, which I'm not going to find too much. Viperio just needs to play for numbers in this round. They really can't afford to be peeking things. Well, I guess the only exception to that is the AWP. And as Artis demonstrates, the scoped weapon over the top of the smoke, you see through it like daylight and that'll be a kill that falls in favor of viperio a five versus four it's 20 percent of the way there to get yourself back on the path to try and take it in two but every single round the last six need to go your way well tapping towards sandbags of mid trying to lock things out with viperio numbers in their favor they can convert this sort of janky buy it might just change the story. That's not a bad start. Ping will find the first. He'll fall away off the back of it. Untraded. Unscathed as well. As it would just drop a smoke for his lorry. Just deny any presence. Down he'll fall oh, through the wood. No. no, this is not good. Swaggy, he will find one. Artist up close with the AWP though. And he's even going to be able to get out and create some distance between himself and the remaining player. It's Ents against three. Flashbang won't blind him because he's standing in front of the white box. But as he swings out, there's two players holding the angle and... Three players will run at him at the end of the round. It's 14-11. Back on the board here, Viperio. And Chet's money starting to dwindle. You can see Viperio call for attack as well. And I think this is a good time to call it. They know they've yeah, kind of they converted a round, which, you know, on paper shouldn't have gone their way. And most importantly, they kind of need it them being three rounds behind. It's on a bit of a knife's edge right now. And every round is so crucial, Viperio. Every time they can chip that deficit away, it's, uh, you know, just giving them a little bit more favorability and the potential of a 2-0. I feel like, if anything, if they were going to play for a 2-0, it would have to be in an overtime situation because I still feel like Chets have got it in them to get themselves up to 15. And they've always seemed to have this, at the very least, three-round gap built up in their favor. For Chets, I don't think they need to be overly concerned right now. But, you know, back to our regular procedure showing in towards this next round where they've got a full buy, AWP of TVS in play as well. I have to see how things pan out. Porta Pui. I've even noticed that that says that, you know. <laughs> I've spent such little time looking at the scenery. Do you reckon the number goes anywhere? Well, it's an 800 number, but I think it's like 343, three, isn't it? It's like meant to be 3, then 4, then 3. Yeah, I really uh, like that. I number. don't know. So... Don't know, mate. That would have been funny, wouldn't it? If it uh, actually led to somewhere. Mate, there's so much going on here, like, lore behind the map that I didn't know. Yeah, of course. But it's uh, up there, one of my favourites. I do like a I love vertigo. a bit of Verti. I love yeah. a bit of Verti. It's probably, um, I'd say, top three maps for me right now. I'd agree. I'd say top Ancient, three, Ancient, yeah. Vertigo, Anubis. Really? i go with a Nuke. Oh, nuke mate, nuke don't get me started. I'd probably say Nuke Vert over, I think, is, is how, I, how I go. Wow. Um, I, I, do you know what? I, as much as people... Everyone likes to complain when new maps come into the pool. Just FYI, people. We are in a, a bit of a tech pause currently. I think it's a Chet's tech pause. So hopefully we can get this uh, 
done and dusted and we can get back underway uh, as soon as. But well, we've got time to talk. You know, whatever new maps come into the pool, you know, I think everyone gets a little bit, you know, on edge. They like to make complaints sure. for no reason. I, you know, Anubis came in and everyone, I think, you know, the, the, what everyone thought was that Toscan was going to be the one added into the pool, right? Um, yeah. Thankfully, not only Valve, but everyone else has realized that Toscan is an absolute steaming pile of garbage um, and it should never come back into the pool because it's just a dog map. Um, but Anubis is it's actually all right. Like, there's really very little you can say on a negative note. I just think, I think, you know, people like to complain for no reason. I think the best way to describe Anubis is it's okay. It works. You know, it's, it's not, not, not too CT sided, not too T sided. Doesn't really have any too many gimmicks. I think the only problem I can really say about Anubis that I've found so far is that there's a bit of clipping issues on some of the walls where, you know, your U-tool doesn't really go the way you'd expect it. But aside from that, I think it's a pretty good map. I'm, I'm actually quite interested to see what it's like in a, in a competitive space. We saw yesterday sure. the first ever HLTV official played on it. It was ATK yes. versus MIBR. We um, did. Which ATK won, in fact. So, you know, the first side to win an official on HLTV. But... It looks like quite a good map on a more competitive space. So I'm looking for, of course, it's not going to be involved in this playoffs, but next season it'll be involved. And it'll be interesting to see how it pans out if any of the teams incorporate it too. As I say, I think the first it in is the uh, Blast Global Finals, right? So. Yes, yeah. We'll see, we'll see. TVS could open things up quite nicely. Orp shot onto MMS. Gives me, you've got to be careful for your left, son. Yellow, not being held by anyone. It's a smoke that creates distance. Dutchy, oh mate, yeah, oh, he's no. got the re gives me. You've got to think about this. You've got to think about this. Slips into sandbag, spots out the arm, tags up, gives me. Yeah, you're dead yeah. to the nade. No oh. way you're getting out of that one. Pink will find the trade, but that just needs to be thought about by Gizmi. Enter's found another, and an extended pause might just have cost Viperio all their momentum. Artists, while blind, no scope found. 2v3. I mean, this looks a little more appropriate, what? but it's. Just runs right in. Artist blind. Swaggy finds the last. Map point jets. That's old Arthur Dutchie as well. J just his presence alone just throws an absolute spanner in the works to Viperio. I mean, for, for Viperio, they needed to find that round there, right? Where they should have definitely down to two. And it kind of really you know, hinders the economy over towards Chets and kind of flips the pressure on towards their side where they know that, you know, Viperio are hot on their tails. And the fact that that's not the case and, uh, you know, one man in Adachi just does such a brilliant individual job there where he's managed to find a gap in the works. Him shift walking through short has changed everything in that round. And credit to him. Yes, he only finds himself one, but just alone, the fact that they know that he snuck out is, you know, it, it throws dismay over towards the CT side where they're panicking to get back on towards the site and, and kind of retain that space. Massive misplay. Four in a row required for Viperio. Look at the buy for the CT side. I don't know what to say. It's grim. It's grim. Yeah. It feels like it's sort of dead in the water already. I mean, it's very hard to get your, heart, your hopes up in this sort of round with this sort of buy. It's one M4 one S, one MP9 and a couple of pistols to try and salvage what has been not the most dominant showing we would have expected from Viper on this map. Swaggy, nearly finding the adjustment. Touchy up close, MP9. I mean, it's done damage. Artist, I was going to say, playing in the uh, sandbag position. Easily, easily done. Four, four ping, didn't even see him. Swaggy's got one, TVS another. Artist out on ramp trying to fight for his life, a fight for survival. And while his first attempt unsilenced, I feel like the next one shall be. Multi pronged attack, one towards elevator. Ent's gonna start creeping in. Artist has actually caught him with his back turned. Giraffe has found his way into T Con. 2v2. Deagle? Is it really gonna keep Viperio alive? TVS goes wandering in, there's Ooh. your first. But now Artis needs to clutch up. 1v1, 12 points of health. He's gonna dart towards B, but pushes the shift key just before he makes it to the site. And he'll get the drop on Javi, at least in terms of info. 
A molly. Oh my word, artist. Oh my god, he jumps around the side, but it's not meant to be. Xavi will find him, and it is indeed a response. Viperio, they get equalized upon. Chess have themselves a three-mapper.